Uh, today we begin to pay attention to the fact that you rested on the seventh day. Somehow you finished your work by resting. This seems odd to us, even contrary to how we think about work. Teach us, Lord, to think of work and rest as you do. Help us to model our own lives after you so that we might live fully and fruitfully. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. So share a sign of peace, and if you're online, um, put a comment in the chat. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From John, the 15th chapter. This is with Jesus uh, in the upper room with his disciples before he is arrested and uh, crucified, and he shares these words with them. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my jo joy may be complete that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from, our, from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Thank you for uh, being here on this beautiful day of rain. We have rain. That is a very thankful Father's Day gift. And today is the second of our three weeks of talking about Sabbath, uh, something that God commanded us to do, to rest. Now, it's not like a time out. As a kid, you know, you're running around too much and time out, sit, be quiet. That is not what Sabbath is. It is found twice in the Bible, both in Exodus and in Deuteronomy. Exodus says, remember the Sabbath and Deuteronomy says, observe the Sabbath, and they both end, and keep it holy. In its simplest definition, Sabbath means rest and divine work to honor God. The believing community is to do these three things on the Sabbath. One, set aside their normal routines and work activities to gain rest and refreshment. Further, to see that such rest is available to all including those who might not normally have the freedom to relax from work, including slaves. But slaves in the Old Testament were more like servants, not like the American tragic history of slavery here. And so tomorrow we celebrate Juneteenth. Um, and the commandment says that everyone, including slaves, would have rest on that day. The Sabbath is for all. And in some manner, number two, the day should be set aside to God for worship. And that is what you are doing, and I thank you for that. And divine service. Uh, for those of you who are assisting in worship today, that is a way to honor Sabbath. And then the community is to recall the redeeming work of God. For Christians, it is giving thanks for our salvation through Jesus. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Just like a father, while the kids are... Screwing around, you still love them, right? That is a given. Sabbath contradicts the nature of our contemporary society, which is 24-7, 365. We're always busy doing something. But we are made in the image of God, and that image includes taking time for rest. We are drawn into the rest of God. In fact, commanded to participate in it in order to remember who God is and who we are outside of the work that we do. The Sabbath is a gift from God. It is given to bless human existence. 
Sabbath work is to create shalom, peace for all people. Theologian Walter Brueggemann writes in his commentary on Genesis regarding our first reading, the Sabbath is about the rest of God. Because humankind is in the image of God, the rest of God is a promised rest for humankind. The rest is to be granted. It is not a sleep which escapes history. It is the freedom and well-being of a new kind of history. As it is kept by the faithful week by week, Sabbath is a disciplined reminder of how creation is intended. Sabbath as rest for God is the ground of sweeping humanism. It exists for the well-being of all humankind. That Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath means a break with the old world of dehumanizing exploitation. Keeping Sabbath is breaking with the world of frantic self-securing. It is a way to know God and God's commitment to creation. The rest of God is an invitation to form a new kind of human community. Kara Root, who's a pastor at Lake Nokomis Presbyterian Church in Minneapolis, and she's one of the contributors to Luther Seminary's Working Preacher notes. It's a radical thing to have a deity that rests. Think of that. God rests. To be so secure in one's power and place as to stop from work. That is a gift. That is knowing who you are when you take time to rest. Sometimes it's remembering who you are outside of work. God gives three blessings at creation. God blesses the creatures. God blesses humans. And then God blesses the day of rest itself. God stops working and enjoys what God has made, an integral part of this creating earth. God is enjoying the beauty and the harmony of every creature and the features making our earth, contributing to that unique design that is so beautiful and intricate and is all connected together. God does not create for the sake of creating. God creates to enjoy and relate and connect. Like a parent stepping back to see their child learn and grow, resting in God's, I love watching you be you. How many parents just love that, of watching their children just be who they become to be? And this is very true for me as a father. This year, my oldest has graduated from college, and my youngest from high school, and the privilege of watching them become who God created them to be. Here at St. Luke's, we are appropriately celebrating Graduate Sunday of our high schoolers on Father's Day. The Father who created and designed them in heaven and the Father that is with them here on earth. It is a privilege to be a father. It's also a pleasure to be a pastor for these seven students, including my youngest, and that little poster that we created, uh, there's a big one out around the corner. Look at it before you grab a piece of cake to celebrate their graduation. And each of them shared a little bit about themselves. And my youngest wrote, um, for his church involvement, he has served as a peer leader, working with our junior high students. He's served as a vacation Bible school leader. And he has served as being pastor's son. <laughs> In his own words, he says that. <laughs> he has also been a camera tech these last two years. And now, right here, he's passing that uh, responsibility on to his older brother, who is home for a year between his schooling. Now he'll be going off to college, and um, we send him with our prayers. I hope you'll take time to look at the St. Luke's board and read all of their comments. We also shared a little piece of each one of them in our Tuesday blog. But as I read through them, it fit perfectly for this time of Sabbath. Each of them have caught a glimpse of what Sabbath means in their statements. Tommy Dennison, he's taking a gap year before going on to college. <sighs> that is Sabbath. If you're a rest between education. Allie Erickson recognizes Sabbath with her Bible verse, finding rest in Jeremiah's prophecy. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Confidence in God is Sabbath. Aubrey Hendrickson, in her verse from Joshua 1.9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord is with you wherever you go. Trust. Trust in God is Sabbath. Rowan O'Hara found Sabbath when he would come and spend some summertime with his grandparents here, Mick and Mary Jean Thorsland, and still considers St. Luke's his home church even though he's near Chicago. But it was in this place that he came to, under, to, come, came to grow in his faith by participating in Vacation Bible School as a, as a child and then growing to be a Vacation Bible School leader um, for the other children and then going to New York City with all seven of these graduates went in that summer of, I can't remember the year, um, 2019 because that's when my son graduated. So it was both of my sons and my wife, her first and only ever mission trip that she went with me on. Um, but all seven of them served two churches, one in Queens and one in Manhattan, doing vacation Bible school. And in that manner, they were offering Sabbath to the children of New York and to their congregations. Cole Reamer also found Sabbath here at St. Luke's as he shares his encouragement to the younger students. And you heard it in a his own words as he said, I know like 95% of you. And he says this, no matter what you go through or obstacles you face, it is reassuring to know that the people of St. Luke's will always have your back. I grew up at this church and have grown to love it like my family. That is Sabbath. Michaela Zednik ties it all together on this Father's Day and provides the perfect segue into our gospel reading as she wrote, Always lean on, as she's leaning on, lean on your family. They are your number one cheerleaders. That is what I hear Jesus telling his disciples. I call you not as servants, but as friends. This is the kind of God who created us. Came to earth to walk with us as Jesus. And God's presence through the Holy Spirit is always with us. Commentator Gail O'Day shares, For John, there is only one measure of one's place in faith, to love as Jesus has loved. And that goes to all. Great and small, ordained and lay, young and old, male and female, are all equally accountable to that one standard, to live according to Jesus' commandment. The church is to be a community in which members are known for the acts of love that they do in common with all other members. It would not be a community built around individual accomplishments, choices, or rights, but around the corporate accountability to the abiding presence of Jesus and the corporate enactment of the love of God and Jesus. Were were the church to shape itself accordingly? It would be a community in which decisions about power and governance would be made in light of this radical egalitarian love of Jesus. Again, from Kara Root, Jesus invites us to abide in him, in all that we do and all that we are. That is Sabbath. The faith of Christ in God, the life of Jesus that is both absolute trust and belonging to God and an absolute mutual care and connection to other human beings... That is Sabbath. We are made for this love, made to live in and share this love. That is Sabbath. And this, and like our Genesis text, we're meant to enjoy the life that we've been given, to share the fullness of life that Jesus enjoys with God in this world that God made and loves us. That is Sabbath. Abiding in God's love brings us a joy and a joy that is made complete when we fully trust and have confidence in it. That is Sabbath. So as society celebrates Father's Day, may we experience the Sabbath given to us by our Father in Heaven. As we celebrate our high school graduates, may they continue to grow in their years taking that Sabbath 
And as a nation, as we celebrate Juneteenth, may we make sure all people come to know and experience Sabbath without delay. For it was given by God for all creation, including all people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended to the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the church and the world. For the church on earth, for those who proclaim the gospel, and for the ministry of congregations throughout the world, that the Holy Spirit will guide all to love and service. Or service. Let us pray. For seas and fields, plants and animals, for the well-being of the earth, and for those who advocate for the just use of God's gifts, that all creation continue to thrive. Let us pray. For the nations of the world, those who govern and those who serve, that leaders accomplish their duties faithfully and judge people with equity. Today we pause and remember our own nation's history on this Juneteenth. We pray for continued healing and strengthening of our relationships between all people. Let us pray. For the sick, the lonely, those who mourn, those afflicted with viruses, bacteria, and other diseases, and those who suffer in body, mind, and or spirit, that God provide them with compassionate caregivers. Let us pray. For diverse families in all places, for all parents and caregivers as they teach their children to know and love God, we give you thanks for all of our fathers and those who serve as fathers to others. We are grateful for their witness and examples of your love. For our graduates, that you continue to guide them in your ways. May you be a blessing to them as they go out in the world to bless others. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for all the saints who have died in Christ, that their faithfulness to the gospel inspire us every day. Let us pray. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake for the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For at home, if you've not already done so, I invite you to find something for your bread, something for your wine, and join us at this table. Lord, we come to the table just as the disciples, those who deserted, those that the one who denied, the one who betrayed. Yet you called them as friends. And it is friends who gather around a table as we celebrate our relationship with one another. And that is what Jesus was doing in this meal. Blessing them and forgiving them through this meal. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. Know that Jesus calls you friend, that you are forgiven, and he invites you to this table, a table that he was at in the night in which he was betrayed. And he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we share the body and blood of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I invite those who are assisting to please come forward. For those of you who are at home, this is the body of Christ given to you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. May the body and blood of Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 
We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use our gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand for our benediction as we go out. May we release the control of all we carry tightly and find rest that God can work all things for good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ be with you.